thanks a, a lot. My name is Lars Bo Kierkegaard, and I'm the general manager sales for Vaxilas Bellas Water Treatment Systems. I want to thank you all for still being here. It ain't easy. Uh, I'll try to honor that by not spending all of my complete time. I have only a few slides. It's been very well presented by Alpha Laval and, uh, and Flow Water. Um, and I honestly do believe it was mentioned evolution, and I also fully agree with that. The market, the industry has moved on, and it has moved on in the way that the topics have changed in the agenda of the uh, RFQs that we are getting. So heading on to the content, I will just briefly touch on the rules and regulations, and then on to, uh, to market solutions, tailored solutions, and on to what I meant by the first thing, that there has been a change in the RFQs, in the topics of the RFQs we are getting. Training is a very hot topic, services is a hot topic, and so is installation services. Ballast water regulation. We still have the two regulatory bodies, US Coast Guard and IMO. Oh, on the uh, left-hand side, we can see US Coast Guard is green. It's good to go. It has been enforced and has been forced for, for a while. IMO is amber. It's uh, on its marks. It could have been slightly green because it is into force. The convention is into force and has been since uh, 8th of September 2017. But there is a little aspect in regard to the IMO convention called ballast water treatment, and that has been granted the grace period of two years. So coming up is the IOPP renewals either on or after uh, um, 8th of September 2018, and that will trigger the compliance of the D2 discharge standard uh, of the ballast water management convention. Now, heading on to uh, the, the technology, I'm just going to do this short. I'm, I'm really, truly convinced that there are systems out there, there are technology, technologies out there that are fit for purpose. It fit for purpose for the vessels, it fit for purpose for the traits, uh, and there are loads of um, suppliers out there that have spent millions of euros in R&D expenditures to make sure that the ship owners in, in this audience and, and, uh, and outside of the audience, that helps them being compliant after and on, on the 8th of September 2019. Um, Bertsila are the only makers in the market that has, that, was, that has developed two technologies to support what I've just mentioned in regards for the ship owners to be compliant. It was a UV and an EC system. Technology is technology. And um, makers out there that has a type approval has either met or exceeded the requirements set forth by the IMO and the US Coast Guard. And that means I believe the industry knows very well what's ahead of them, full stop, actually. And I also do believe that we see that in the RFQs that we're getting, it's not so much technology um, rounded. Uh, it's not about what have you done in regards to, to type approvals, what are your technologies, and do you have medium, medium pressure lamps, et cetera, et cetera. It has moved on to become training services and installation services. And that's what we see here. So there are a few steps that ship owners uh, need to consider um, in regards to before choosing uh, or installing a, a ballast water treatment system. There is a selection of the supplier. There is definitely some, some homework to be done. Uh, moving on to what resources do, I, do the ship owners have in-house? What resources do I need? Where am I in regards to what, what type of engineering do I need? Do I need 3D scanning, ship surveys, feasibility studies, et cetera, et cetera? And um, of course, that has to tie in with what, what credible supplier that the, the, the ship owner ends up uh, dealing with at the end of the day, so they can, act, so they can really give out a good solutions for the, um, for the times to come. So if we're looking at, at some true numbers here in a uh, project timeline, 
this, this timeline that we are seeing here for UV and NEC system is done by Vatsila, of course, and is based on the UV system was done on board a container vessel, and the EC system was done on board an MR tanker. These numbers that is uh, mentioning six, seven, eight months, as you can see, is completely without uh, the commercial aspects. Vetting vendors, getting on board with their credible supplier they have chosen to work with, T and C negotiation and price negotiations, et cetera, et cetera. These, these numbers are, are purely from a 3D scanning to the axial installation. So dating back to what was mentioned on the 8th of September 2019, if there are somebody in the audience that, that has, how to say, a compliance date coming up very, very soon, even on to Q1 2020, uh, 2020 these numbers speak for themselves as definitely something that needs to be considered uh, very early on. Training, absolutely vital. Ballast water operation is not just something that, need, that can be done. Ballast operation is not longer an unhog operation. Each ship needs to have a ballast, ballast management certificate. It has to have a ballast management plan. It has to have a ballast management record book. That record book has to be kept on board for two years. The system has to be keep, kept in neat condition, mint condition, and there has to be a spare part consumption. It's a bit like what was talked about in the earlier states. But what are the policies, et cetera, et cetera? I'm, I'm truly believe with eight years in, in, in this industry from my side, if it is being kept in, in, in mint condition and there are spare part consumption, the record books is ready available, that is probably enough for the policing. But that comes on to training. Absolutely, it's a key. And for Vatsila, we have a, our Vatsila Land and Sea Academy in Drunen in the Netherlands. We have installed physically the land-based testing UV system and also for the EC system was the, is installed there, ready for hands-on training, classroom training. And all the other places in the world with, where it's blue is where we also have the ability to, to do on-site training and courses on board and, and live. Services. There will be surprises. As was mentioned before, it, this is not being policed, doesn't have to be in the next, until the 8th of September. So many ship owners are not pressing the green button. So yes, there will certainly be, be surprises when the green button is pressed. And so it is for everybody, all aspects in the market. So services is as critical as training and also in, install the services. So make absolutely sure ship owners in the audience that it is not just empty shells when, we, when you see orange dots or whatever presentation you see from, from suppliers. Are they empty shells or do they actually have service engineers on a global scale ready to, to act on a, on, a, on a local presence? So summing it all up, type approvals, training, market has moved on, it has matured a little bit has to have service, has to have training. So for Vatsila, we also have uh, a buy-in in this one. We also have to have a reputation. So when, when, the, when the green buttons start to pressing for us, it's about, it's about partnership. We can all see the wave, and we saw the numbers about ramp up. Um, so you can see the wave here. That wave can be in different shapes, uh, but it, it will particular look in, in, in this size. So there will be a lot of installations to be done over the coming years. So do the right thing and do your risk mitigations. Thank you.